Uga chaka, uga 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 chaka, uga uga. I can't stop this feeling. Uga uga. Deep inside of me. Girl, you just don't realize we're playing Trinity. That's the joke. That's the intro. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. This episode's for deep cut MBT fans only. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking about those of you who watched the Socks vlogs, those of you who endured the 24 hour video from 2016, and braver than every United States Marine, those of you who watched the stream highlights. Today we are once again dipping our toes into Trinity format, something we last did about 7,000 subscribers ago. To those of you unfamiliar with this fledgling format, let me introduce you to some of the most exciting decks in the November 2019 Trinity format. But first, for those of you unfamiliar with Trinity format, which statistically is about 7,000 of you, let me give you the elevator pitch. Trinity Format is an attempt to capture some of the measured, methodical, advantage-oriented gameplay of GOAT Format, but with newer cards. They've taken a hardline stance against the long turns, oops I win floodgates, and unkillable bosses that are frequently represented in the TCG, and through a custom ban list and a custom rule set, have made a format that, in my opinion, scratches an itch for interaction that I'd been missing. They've got three central rules that drastically change how the game is played. 1. Each player is only able to summon effect monsters three times per turn. 2. Each player is only able to play one copy of any unlimited card. And 3. For every five cards you include over the minimum main deck size of 30, you get yourself a trinity. These trinities can be spent on an additional copy of an unlimited card, a single copy of an extremely powerful semi-forbidden card like Pot of Greed or Mirage of Nightmare, or two copies of slightly less busted co-forbidden cards like Yada Garasu or Change of Heart. If it seems complicated, don't worry. There's an entire Discord server of dedicated players who would love to help you through the deck building process. We've also got a bot to scan your list for legality so you don't get bullied for trying to play Masterpiece. Though, let's be honest, you deserve it. Still, I have low expectations for my viewers. I mean, I do read your comments. So I'm here to give you the inside scoop on three decks that are guaranteed out of the box competitive. Come ruin the format with these or improve on my deck building and show me up if you're so clever. Guy who spent three hours arguing about Eye of Tamias ratios in my community posts. Finally, before we jump into our first deck list, this video coincides with a free Trinity Format tournament hosted on Discord over the course of the month. The cup starts on the 15th, which gives you more than half a week to tune a list and get to format breaking. As an added incentive, anyone who beats me in the Swiss portion of the tournament will get an exclusive sticker mailed to their house once the admins get around to it. So with that, let's check out some decks. First is a list that does a lot for me personally. Obviously, with the focus on banning floodgates and bosses that are hard to beat, Colossus tops the list of FBI's most wanted, with Titan close behind. However, did you know there is actually an additional Thunder Dragon fusion monster? As any Duel Links duelist can tell you, the Thunder Dragons form an exceptionally powerful resource loop, they're just lacking in payoffs. Unironically, this art-mismatched, two-mouthed monstrosity might just do the trick. This list plays the dangers as conditional upstart goblins alongside the metaphys monsters since we're already so deep on banish effects. It is also uniquely able to make use of the unbound list of cards. You're allowed to max out for free on any monster that refers to itself, which is a collection of cards about 15 deep. They're mostly maliciouses, but they also luckily contain Thunder Dragon, Thunder Dragon Dark, and Bayo Baboon, helping us smooth out draws and do something with all the empty advantage this engine creates. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our Thunder Dragons. We're on three of the old greenie, three Thunder Dragon Dark, and one each of Thunder Dragon Roar, Hawk, and Duo. After that are our Metaphys monsters, Metaphys Ragnarok, Metaphys Dedulus, Metaphys Neftis, and Metaphys Tyrant Dragon. The glue that holds the whole deck together is Aloof Lupine, and we're following him up with White Dragon Wyverbuster and Black Dragon Collapse Serpent. Next are Dangers Bigfoot and Thunderbird, Eccentric Boy for a Synchro Suite, Triple Bayo Baboon, and a Hand Trap Package of Effect Failure, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, and Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. For spells, we're on Allure of Darkness, Asymeftis, Gold Sarcophagus, 
Metaphys Factor, Shuffle Reborn, The Monarch Stormforth, Thunder Dragon Fusion for our textless purple friend, Trade In, Twin Twisters, and Traps of Metaphys Ascension, Paleozoic Dynamiscus, and Dragon Storm Return. We are on two Trinities, which affords us the Co Forbidden Chaos Dragon Levianir and Eater of Millions, and an additional copy of Aloof Lupine. In the extra deck, we're on Twin Headed Thunder Dragon, alongside Angel of Zera, Cyburst Quantum Dragon, this guy, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, Shiorcus Dingirsu, Evil Swarm Exiton Knight, Hieretic Sun Dragon Overlord of Heliopolis, Big Eye, Fierce Ogre of Tenyi, Nightmare Cerberus, Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, Land Falinkus, and some Summer Summoner. So with that, let's check out a game. Our match is up against Necroz, which performs surprisingly well in a Highlander format. This matchup is interesting because both players' hands effectively represent a puzzle. We're trying to establish a resource loop very quickly that our opponent won't be able to outgrind. Unfortunately for our opponent, we have the most powerful card in the game in our hand, Thunder Dragon Fusion with a single target. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Reinforcement of the Army for Kloss. Afterwards, they'll normal summon a copy of Sonic Bird for a Kaleidoscope. They'll activate Extra Foolish Burial, taking 4,000 damage in order to search a copy of Valkyris to hand. They'll Kaleidoscope both Valkyris and Klossalus before activating Valkyris' effect, triggering the effect of Shurit, that triggers it, and adding both Trish and Gungnir to hand. We'll lead with a copy of Asymeftis, and because we banished Ascension, we'll be able to search a copy of Ragnarok. We'll activate Ragnarok, and ooh, a dark off the top, don't mind if I do! We'll activate a couple copies of Thunder Dragon and follow that up with Chaos Dragon Levy Near. Our opponent's going to activate Gung Near, but I'll still be able to destroy one of them. Afterwards, we'll Special Eater of Millions, and while we're out of Summons of Effect Monsters, Twin Headed Thunder Dragon isn't exactly an effect monster. Now that we've catered to the combo gremlins, it's time for a list to satisfy Ra's chosen people. Control players. This list is a little ditty I've been cooking up over the course of the past week, Sarah Neos. Once again, borrowing from the degenerates at Duel Links, we're using Neos Fusion as a glorified foolish burial to send Goki Pole to the graveyard, enabling everyone's favorite collection of cards that make your parents uncomfortable, Trap Tricks. Add to that some expressly suspect enablers for format all-star Gizmek Orochi, and you're well on your way to setting for and passing. Just remember, since most of the games are played on Dueling Book, there's no time limit. From one control player to another, typing thinking in chat doesn't count as a win condition. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our Trap Tricks. We're on Mantis, Mermelo, and Dianea, with Trap Tricks in Training, Lone Fire Blossom, and Goki Pole. For Neo's stuff, we're on Keeper of Dragon Magic, and this guy, who keeps ending up in my opener. After that are our Recruiters, Dark Greffer, Armageddon Knight, and Mathematician, with a secondary send target of Absolute King Backjack. We're on World Lance to protect Sarah, but also to find off Orcist Crescendo, and Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, because I hear she's okay. For spells, we're on Neos Fusion, Called by the Grave, Foolish Burial, Instant Fusion, Twin Twisters, and Foolish Burial Goods, with our send target of Orcist Crescendo to find Gizmek. After that is our Trap Hole Suite, Trap Hole Nightmare, Time Space Trap Hole, Floodgate, and Bottomless. After that is two copies of the Unbound Super Team Buddy Force Unite, which, to be honest, I'm playing because of the art. Then we're on Infinite Impermanence, Blind Obliteration, Paleozoic Oleanades, Dynamiscus, and Morella, Mirror Force, Compulsory Escape Device, which hilariously does not affect Sarah, Torrential Tribute for the same reason, Fiend Griefing, Stand BTS, Ring of Destruction, Compulsory Evacuation Device, and the Co-Forbidden Heavy Storm Duster forming a pair with Trap Trick Sarah. Finally, we're on the Semi-Forbidden Gizmek Orochi. In the extra, we've got a copy of Brave Neos, a copy of Neos Knight, a Norden, a Thousand Eyes Restrict, Xyz of Dark Rebellion Xyz, Tornado Dragon, and Exiton Knight, and Links of Berserker, Nightmares Unicorn, Phoenix and Cerberus, We Witch's Apprentice, Land Falinkus, Salaman Great Almirage, and the bay herself. So with that, let's jump into a game. Our match is up against Dragon Link, a deck that, at least in this format, plays about 15 supplemental engines and requires an IQ of 15,000 to pilot correctly. Luckily for us, all we gotta do is set cards and hope for the best. What I appreciate about this format is that even though our opponent is going first and has full combo, no board they build is going to be unbreakable. The first thing they're going to do is normal summon a copy of Draconet. They'll use its effect to get a copy of Galaxy Serpent and follow it up with a Vessel. I'm not interested in them drawing six cards, so I will allow them to go into Eve. They're going to activate World Legacy Guard Dragon, special summoning back the Galaxy Serpent for a land for Linkus in order to get a Lee from deck. They'll activate Lee, Link summon a copy of Berserker, activate Lee again, and set a copy of Secrets. For turn we draw a trap, which is good. We'll go from Lone Fire into Dianea into Sarah, set three, and pass it back. 
Our opponent's going to normal summon a copy of Lee, and then they'll go to battle phase. We don't need Sarah for much more than one activation, so we'll activate Heavy Storm Duster, activate Mermillo's effect. It is mandatory, even if they don't have spells and traps, and fetch a Bottomless. They'll activate World Legacy's Memory in main phase 2, Link summon a copy of Morningstar, get a copy of Succession, and pass it back. For turn, we draw a copy of Super Team Body Force Unite. Things are looking a little grim. We gotta get this Guard Dragon out of our opponent's hand, so we do so. We'll set this trap and pray... Our opponent's going to just go to battle phase, attacking directly for 3,000, but it's time to let the snake out of his cage. We'll activate Paleozoic Morella in order to send a copy of Orcus to Crescendo, then special summon the snake. It's going to eat a big foot in main phase 2, but it's a little late. They're going to special a Thunderbird, which we will bottomless to get damage off the board, but unfortunately the card they draw into is Mathematician, which allows them to send a copy of Ancients, which allows them to specially Dragon Spirit of White and clear our board safe for a snake, which we are able to super team off of the Morningstar. Of course, Snake is a house, and we are able to clean this board up pretty effectively, even if we are going to take a little bit of damage next turn. They'll attack into the Snake, and then attack directly with this copy of Mathematician. I'm not interested in taking that amount of damage, and our opponent decides to send their card in in order to rip an Overraptor off the top. Ugh, rewarded. Afterwards, they'll special summon a Flame Veil Guard, and... Oh god, Spirit Dragon. Flashbacks to 2016 format. We'll prompt the Spirit Dragon. This puts an Azure on their side of the field. In response to the activation of Azure's effect, we will activate Paleozoic Dynamiscus in order to banish it, and then specially Morella from our graveyard. Things are looking very good, provided our opponent can't out exactly one snake. They draw a copy of Brotar, which allows them to Link Summon a Link Karibo, and then special back this copy of Dragon Spirit of White. Okay, well, we are gonna have to destroy the Dragon Spirit of White, which allows them to bring back the Brotar. They'll activate Brotar on Brotar in order to get Levianir, and we're gonna have to worry about that next turn. We'll get in for 2450 and pass it back. For turn, our opponent draws, ugh, Lost Wind. They'll activate Chaos Dragon Levianir's effect. I activate Time Space Trap Hole and Chain Paleozoic Dynamiscus, but the effect they activated was the Reborn. They'll end on a Spirit Dragon, which is intensely frustrating. We'll activate Snek. They'll activate Lost Wind, but I think we win from this position by Link summoning a copy of Cerberus and activating its effect. This is the type of back-and-forth gameplay that is why I love Trinity. And finally, this deck. Listen, life can be complicated. Living under capitalism can feel like a constant struggle between devoting attention to your job, your friends, your family, your second job, your side hustle, your YouTube career. Anyway, this deck is for those of us without brain cells to spare. Using the complex and intriguing synergy between the Danger Monsters and the Dark World ones, we can make a big man who hit hard without running up against the summon limit. What's doing a lot of heavy lifting for this list is the suite of options that are too strong for the TCG, but not game-breaking enough to be banned here. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, we're on every Danger Sans Snack. Danger Bigfoot, Thunderbird, Ogopogo, Dogman, Nessie, Mothman, Chupacabra, and Jackalope. For Dark Worlds, we're on Graffa, Lucent, Silva, Gold, Snow, Beige, and Brow. We're also on 2011 format All-Star, Trance Archfiend. We are on a TGU package of Herself, Sangan, Skarm, and Lilith. For Spells, we're on Drag Down Into the Grave, Danger Response Team, Dark World Dealings, Foolish Burial, Dark World Lightning, The Nude, Card of Safe Return, The Gates of Dark World, and a trap lineup of the Unbound Super Team Body Force Unite, Danger Zone, it's just Graceful Charity, Paleozoic's Oleonades and Dynamiscus, Dark Deal, Dark Smog, and Mirage of Nightmare. This card is semi-forbidden, and let me tell you, if you ever resolve it, mwah, you will find out why immediately. In the extra deck, we have a lot of monsters that, I mean, why would you make? Putting two big dudes into one smaller dude? Disgusting. We're on Dingirsu, Dark Rebellion Xyz, Tornado, Evil Swarm Exiton, Grand Pulse, Dante, and a Link lineup of Borolode, Gaia Saber, Topologic Trisbania, Nightmare Unicorn, Master King Archfiend, Phoenix, Cerberus, Wee Witch, and Lanphalinkus. So with that, let's jump into a game. Our match is up against Ojama ABC. Don't laugh, we had to ban cards because of this deck. Our hand is looking good, except for Card of Safe Return, who is looking like he needs some pants. Our opponent's going first, they're going to set a copy of Ojama Blue and Foolish Burial Goods a duo to Graveyard. They'll pass it back to us, and ooh, sick rip. 
We'll start by setting all the cards we don't want discarded, and then discarding a copy of Skarm. Easy! We'll then activate Dark World Lightning in order to proc the effect of Snow, and then we'll activate Drag Down into the Grave in order to proc the effect of Lucient, drawing us a card off of Safe Return. We're going to try to get in and get stonewalled by some abominations to God before setting a Dark Smog and triggering the effect of Skarm. We'll pass it back to our opponent. They're going to normal summon a copy of Condemned Witch, use her effect to get Forbidden Chalice, and then miss on their Bigfoot. Unfortunately, this is the end of Card of Safe Return. At end step, we're going to activate a danger zone and effectively draw three cards. We will pitch both a Chupacabra and a copy of Jackalope. We're just going to switch to attack position and go to battle phase. Our opponent's going to tag out into a copy of Shining Angel, and I have no desire to play through this card. We're going to shuffle him back with Unicorn after eating a Forbidden Chalice on our Cerberus, just putting all of the cards that we just put on our side of the field directly into our graveyard. Our opponent draws a Thunderbird, and they miss. That allows them to destroy one of our set cards, which is no big deal. Dark Deal is pretty dead at this point in the game anyway. We'll normal summon a copy of Tour Guide in order to get a Sangan. We'll link summon a copy of Nightmare Phoenix, triggering the effect of Sangan and Phoenix to destroy the last remaining card. It is Union Scramble, and now we're able to walk over their X-Head Cannon to get in for lethal. So that's that. Again, I implore you to check out this extremely fun fan format. There's a Discord link in the description. While I appreciate all of my viewers, a special thanks to my patrons, especially Tyler Slacks, Crispy, Sir Tachyon, Mika Reichman, Distrin, Lucas Geerdes, Adam Trevino, Second, Lieutenant Labcoat, Fighting Fang Wong, Meep Moto 27, Burrito Man 93, Adrian Bra, Adam Sunquist, Isaac Jackson, and Donnie Fillerup. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, follow me on Twitch as well. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.